Rainbow Six Siege is a very hard game for beginners. There are now 16 different rank maps and 71 different operators, each with their own loadouts, abilities, and roles. This is very daunting for a new player to learn, so that's why in this video I'm going to be giving you some of the best beginner operators anybody can pick up and play. And starting with the first operator on the list, at number 10 we have Smoke. Smoke is an iconic operator in Siege, being one of the most consistently best operators in the game ever since it was released. He has a super simple ability. He has three smoke canisters which he can throw. This canister sticks to pretty much any server and once manually activated will release a cloud of smoke. This smoke does damage to any attacker or teammate but doesn't do damage to smoke himself. This canister is not bulletproof but you can prep it because it's pretty hard to spot but just be wary that you can't throw another one until you activate the one you've already thrown. As for his primary weapons, you have the choice between the FMG9 SMG and the M5 shotgun. The consensus for the choice between these two guns is mainly the M5 shotgun as it provides much more value for the round. You can create rotations for your team, head holes, foot holes, pop hatches, and it's just great at close range as it's one of, if not the best shotguns in the game. Another thing that makes the shotgun a better choice is the pairing with his secondary machine pistol, the SMG-11. While this gun does have a lot of recoil, it's the fastest killing gun in the game, so that right there makes up for it. If you can get used to the SMG-11's recoil, you're going to be used to any gun's recoil in the game. With the pairing of his primary shotgun and the SMG-11, Smoke has one of the best loadouts on defense. Smoke has access to barbed wire and proximity alarm as his secondary gadgets. Barbed wire is placed in common areas for the attackers to traverse. When an attacker is walking through the barbed wire, they are slowed down and it makes a loud noise that gives away their position. You want to take advantage of when they're caught in barbed wire as it makes them much more vulnerable. You can use your barbed wire to cover areas you're not watching so you can cover more area throughout the map. On the other hand, proximity alarms are solid, just not as good as barbed wire because you don't get the same slowed effect. The slowing effect the barbed wire creates allows you to react to sound much better, but the proximity alarm does make a louder noise. So if you're having trouble hearing the barbed wire, proximity alarms is still solid. Just make sure as smoke, you're using your smokes to slow the attackers down and waste more time, and you only have 3 minutes in a round, so try not to die with smokes in your pocket as they're better off being used than not. And an operator you do want to use is number 9 on this list, Ayana. Ayana's ability is a clone that she can deploy which acts like a normal operator, but she can't shoot or melee and it is destroyed in one shot. You can use this clone to gather information as if it was a drone, or you can use the drone to destroy a runic gates. Ayana's clone cannot deploy near a mute jammer and if deployed, once the clone reaches the area of effect of the mute jammer, it will then be muted offline. Ayana has the choice between impact EMPs and smoke grenades. Impact EMPs are one of the best secondary gadgets for attackers as they're used to disable electronic gadgets and the main use for them is to disable wall denial to allow your hard breach to open out the main wall. Just make sure you're accurate because you only get two and they have a pretty small radius so you want to know where the gadget you're disabling is before throwing the EMP. Smoke grenades are also very solid as they allow you to mask plants which is going to lower the risk of going for a plant. Which which is obviously very beneficial. Really the choice is up to what your team needs. If you have no EMPs on your team to help with the wall, go for impact EMPs. But if your teammates do have EMPs, go for smoke grenades. As for Ayana's primary weapons, she has a choice between the ARX and the G36. The ARX is a hard hitting medium fire rate assault rifle with easy to control recoil. The G36 is a medium damage, high fire rate, medium recoil assault rifle. Most people would agree that the ARX is better due to it being superior in time to kill and recoil. It's much better than the G36 since the G36 got nerfed. To put her weapon to use, make sure you play off the information you gathered with her clone because she is easily one of the best information operators in the game. And Siege is a game of information so Ayana can be a very good operator to get better at the game from using. And if you want to get better at the game, definitely try out number 8 on this list, Legion. Legion has 9 total mines that he can throw. He starts out with 1 and they generate up to 9 throughout the round. If an attacker walks directly over the mine, they take immediate damage. And if they don't remove the mine, they'll continue to take further damage. Attackers are in a very vulnerable position when stuck with the lesion mine because they are slowed down and unable to sprint. You want to place these mines strategically because they can be destroyed in one bullet. For his primary weapons, Legion has one of the best SMGs on defense, the T5 SMG. It has medium damage, high fire rate, and absolutely no recoil. This thing is a laser, and on top of that you have his secondary shotgun, the Super Shorty. This can be used to create rotates and holes throughout the site, and is good close range if needed. For his secondary gadget, he has the choice between observation 
observation blockers and a bulletproof camera. Bulletproof camera is the move as it allows you to gather information and disable gadgets while being hard to destroy. The observation blocker isn't great as it can be destroyed with one bullet and doesn't affect the round that much. And always remember with Legion you should be placing your mines under window hop-ins, on stairways, and next to doorways like you see me doing. This way they're more likely to be triggered and always remember if you're having trouble against shields Legion is a great counter to them. And the seventh operator on this list is Ash. Ash is a very iconic operator in Siege, rightfully so because she has been one of the best operators ever since the game has came out. Ash's ability is a projectile breaching charge which she gets three charges of. With this breaching charge she can destroy any non-reinforced walls, any soft floors or hatches. And on top of that, most gadgets, including maestro cams, castle barricades, and mirror windows, just to name a few. Just watch out for Jaeger ADSs or a my disc, as if you shoot your breach charge near them, it will be destroyed, and if you shoot one into an Aruni gate, it will also be destroyed. But you don't want to always use her projectile to destroy stuff. Use her secondary gadget breaching charges when possible to save your projectiles from more important opportunities. And another viable option is claymores, as they allow you to stop pesky flankers so you can keep your mind on the objective. Ash also has a very good primary weapon in the R4C which is an assault rifle with high fire rate, high damage, and above average recoil. So I'd recommend running flash hider if you're having trouble, but if you feel fine with the recoil, go with extended barrel. The R4C is one of the best guns on attack and once you get used to it, it shreds. I wouldn't recommend using the G36 because it's worse in damage, fire rate, and recoil. And always remember with Ash, you're playing the role of entry fragger, so you should always be the first person in the building to take control of the map for your team. With such a simple and easy ability to use, Still being one of the best operators in the game, Ash is definitely one of the best beginner attackers. And it shows in her pick rates as she's by far the most played operator even in high ranks. And if you're a running gun style of player, Ash is perfect for you. Number 6 on the list for the best beginner operators is Doc. Doc is a perfect beginner operator with a super simple ability. Doc has a stim pistol which you can choose to shoot your teammates or yourself with. When stimmed, you'll be healed to max health with 20 overheal. This is obviously very strong and very easy to use. As well as there's not really any counters to him other than just killing him which obviously counters every other operator in the game. Another reason Doc is a great beginner operator is his loadout. For his primary weapon, Doc has the option of the SG CQB shotgun, MP5, and the P90. His shotgun isn't bad, but I wouldn't recommend it. Between the P90 and the MP5, in my opinion, the MP5 is better. It has a better time to kill and has less recoil, and the only advantage of the P90 is the magazine capacity of 50 compared to the MP5's 30. Doc also has the choice between three different secondary handguns. The unanimous best option for most people is the Bailiff, as it provides the most value because it allows you to set up rotations and holes throughout the site. And on top of that, if you're close enough to an enemy, it can be decent for killing. You should also be using your secondary bailiff lift to shoot holes through walls and floors to heal your teammates. And always make sure to be aware of your teammates health as even if someone only takes a slight amount of damage you should try to heal them as the overheal makes sure it's never a waste and you don't want to die with your heals in your pocket. And the next operator on the list is Ace. Ace is a hard breacher and much more centered around supporting the team. Ace is one of the most versatile and in most people's opinion the best hard breacher in the game. Now Ace's ability is his Selma charges which can open up soft or mainly hard surfaces like reinforced walls or hatches, which can be used to create easier entrances into the site or just to create more lines of sight. He can also destroy castle barricades and shields with his ability. Just make sure before opening a wall there's no wall denial like Mute, Bandit, or Cade, and you don't want to throw your aces near Jaeger ADSs or my disc as they will get caught and Rooney gates do destroy them. Also as ace you don't want to die early in the round, so make sure you're droning and watching out for spawn peaks so you can actually get the main wall open. Once you've gotten the main wall open, you can then start to frag out. Ace is the best fragging support attack in the game so make sure you've done your job for the round and then you can go play aggressive. Now Ace has the choice between hard breaches or claymores. Most of the time it's recommended to equip claymores as you're going to be outside more often so people will try to run out on you and most likely you can just prep a claymore on the run out. As well as it's harder to watch flank while trying to get a wall open so you can set up your claymores to protect you. And the other option is breaching charges which can destroy soft surfaces. If you want to open up more lines of sight and maybe open some vertical holes then there you go. Another reason why Ace is one of the best attackers in the game is his primary weapon in the AK-12. Easily one of the best guns in the game with a high fire rate, high damage, and low recoil. With all those attributes in mind, it makes Ace an incredible beginner operator and one of the best and most played operators in the game. The next operator I'm going to be talking about for the best beginner operators is Frost. Frost has three welcome mats that she can place down. If an attacker steps on one, they'll be caught in the trap basically in a down position. They can then pick themselves up which will take 2.5 seconds. Once they're up, they'll be left with 20 HP 
while also leaving a blood trail behind them, as well as making loud moaning noises and unable to sprint. Your frost mat will be destroyed in two bullets from most guns, so you want to place them in the right spots. And for frost, I would recommend running her C1 as her primary weapon. You can pair this with her secondary shotgun, which will allow you to set up rotates and holes throughout the site. Her C1 has a good damage of 40 for an SMG on defense and virtually no recoil. The only problem is the fire rate of 575. This makes for an extremely slow killing gun, but if you can aim for the head, the recoil is going to allow for a lot of headshots. For for secondary gadgets, Frost has the choice between a bulletproof camera and a deployable shield. Bulletproof cam is great, but deployable shield is arguably the best defender secondary gadget as it allows for you to hold areas of the map much safer. Playing behind your shields with your traps in front of you is the best way to play Frost. The best spots to place your welcome mats are below windows, common spots attackers drop or vault over, on the top of staircases as they're usually looking up so they won't see the Frost mat, and if you do place your Frost mat below a single window, make sure to place it a little bit to the side so it's harder for the attackers to shoot it once they vault in. The next operator we have is Finca. Finca is an operator with a very simple ability. All you have to do is see your teammate take damage, pop your ability, and everyone on your team will be healed by 20 health. Now there's actually some more boosts that come along with it. First of all, when Finca boost is activated, your whole team can aim down sights faster. You can also unflash, stun, or concuss your teammates, as well as being able to revive teammates when they're downed. A drawback of the Finca boost though is the sound it makes. When the boost is activated, it makes a noise that can mask some of the sound cues the defenders give off like footsteps so do be wary of that. Finger boost can also overheal, so don't be too cautious to use her ability. If anyone on your team takes damage, use your heal because you can benefit your other teammates with the overheal, which can allow them to be more aggressive in gunfights. Another reason why Finca is so good is how versatile her loadout is. She has access to smoke grenades, stun grenades, and frag grenades, meaning she can smoke off lines of sights to help aid the plant, or she can use her stuns to play aggressive and flush enemies out of their position, or she can use frags to destroy utility and flush enemies out as well. There's not many operators with as versatile secondary gadgets as Finca, and for which one to run, they all have a role, but nades are probably the most beginner friendly. Just make sure if you do run nades, you destroy utility with them because you can't cook grenades anymore, which lowers the kill potential significantly, so you get the best out of them by destroying utility like shields. As for her primary weapon, she has the choice between the spear assault rifle, the SP-41 LMG, and the sausage shotgun. The spear is a high damage, medium fire rate assault rifle with a manageable recoil. And on the other hand, you have the LMG, which is a high damage, slightly lower fire rate, and slightly higher recoil. But the main advantage to the LMG is the capacity of 100 bullets per magazine. You can provide so much more pressure without having to worry about reloading. You really only have to reload once per round, and with the recent recoil changes to LMGs, they're much better. And as for the sausage, shotguns aren't very good on attack because you can't get the value of setting up the sight like on defense, so for almost every operator on attack, I wouldn't recommend using shotguns. And that's really all to Finca, super simple and easy to use ability while still helping the entire team and one of the most versatile attackers in the game. Just make sure you're not stingy with her ability as you don't want to die with heals in your pocket. Number two on the list for the best beginner operators is Capcan. Capcan is one of the best beginner operators as he is super simple and can allow you to get free kills by only placing down your ability. Capcan has five traps which you can place on doorways and windows. When an attacker passes through the threshold of the doorway, or window, they set off a trap causing it to explode. If you place one trap, it does 60 damage. If you place two, it stacks to 120. You could place all five on one doorway if you wanted to, but there'd be no point considering three traps is guaranteed kill to any operator. What I like to do is place three on one and then place the other two somewhere else to cover more area. You can also change the height of the capcan traps to place them farthest away from head level. All you have to do is just look down as far as possible when placing them. His traps are one shot to any gun, so they can be destroyed in numerous ways, but don't underestimate capcan as if you're playing aggressive players, he will allow you to pick up some free kills almost every round. Capcan also has access to C4, which is one of the best secondary gadgets in the game. His C4 can be used to deny plants, C4 below, or just general kill potential. And that's why I don't recommend running bulletproof cam. Even though it's good, it's not on the level of the C4. And as for his primary weapons, he has the 9x19 SMG. This thing is a laser, basically having no recoil, medium fire rate, and a high damage, especially for an SMG on defense. And that's why you shouldn't run his primary shotgun. It's one of the worst shotguns shotguns in the game, so I wouldn't recommend using it. Capcan can be one of the most lethal operators and easiest to get kills with, but like a lot of other trap operators, you should be using your traps to watch areas for you. And what I mean by this is if you place a Capcan trap on a doorway, you don't have to watch that doorway because the attackers have to make some kind of noise to destroy it or if they walk through, which gives you enough time to react and play off of it. So you can place your traps down and watch the areas your traps aren't covering. Just be wary that as Twitch, she can destroy them pretty quietly and Brava can also hack them to use against 
against you. And now for the operator, which I have is the number one best operator to learn Rainbow Six Siege and play well while doing so, we have Buck. Buck has a very simple ability. He is a soft breacher with an underbarrel shotgun, which he can use to destroy soft surfaces like floors and walls, and also can be used to get kills at close range. He cannot destroy bulletproof utility like maestro cams, bulletproof cams, or castles with his underbarrel shotgun, but the advantage Buck has is he can go below or above the site and destroy the floor or the ceiling to get angles into sight, which allows you to destroy utility and get kills. You can also just use Buck to create rotates between rooms for easier mobility, and once you start opening up walls and floors, you see what leads to where, allowing you to learn the maps much faster and be much more aware. You can also do something called creating ghost pressure. This just means opening parts of the map to make it harder for the defenders to know where you're coming from. If I only open up one wall leading to sight, all the attackers have to watch is one wall, but if I open up four or five, they have to worry about much more. This works especially well in the lower ranks as the defenders already pretty much don't know what's going on. And also another good thing about Buck is his ability has pretty much no counters, meaning you can run him every round and be fine. For his secondary gadgets, Buck has the choice between stun grenades and hard breach charges. Stun grenades are great for aggressive play as they allow you to flush enemies out wherever they're holding, which then you can go for the easy kill. But on the other hand, hard breach charges are also great as they allow you to open up reinforced surfaces on top of being able to open up soft surfaces with his shotgun. Like I said, playing above the site is very good, but with hard breach charges, you can open up hatches above the site as well. You can also open up reinforced walls to create easier pushes. Buck has the choice between the C8 assault rifle and the Cam RS DMR. The C8 is one of the best guns in the game being a high fire rate, high damage AR with manageable recoil. And on the other hand, he has one of the best DMRs in the game, the Cam RS. This is a low recoil, high damage DMR, but in my opinion, the C8 is the best pick considering it's one of the best guns in the game. But if you're really good with DMRs, like I said, the Cam RS is probably the second best in the game, so that would still be a good pick. Buck also has access to the Gone 6 secondary, which can be used to destroy bulletproof utility or just to pop soft hatches. And with all of those attributes in mind, it makes Buck one of the most versatile operators in the game, being able to do everything that's needed to win around while still being easy to use. If you feel you improved from this video or you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to watch more of my content, then click the video popping up on your screen.